Okay, today we're going to be introducing the third unit, cause and effect essays. Cause and effect essays are a kind of exposition essay. You are also going to give the reader key information. But cause and effect is one way to present this information. As you can tell from the name, a cause and effect essay focuses on some kind of event or phenomenon. And you need to explain either the causes or the events of your topic, or if you want, you can do both. So here are some ways to do this. You can focus on the cause or usually more than one cause. So this is type one. You begin by introducing your topic. Why should the reader care about your topic? Why is it interesting? Why is it worth talking about? And you should also mention that you're going to talk about the cause or the causes. Then in the main part of your essay, spend one paragraph discussing each cause. So one reason this happened is maybe this. Another reason could be because of that. And uh, so spend one paragraph for each cause. And by the end of the essay, you should remind your reader the importance of the effect of the, the topic that you've chosen and also tell the reader how maybe they have benefited from reading your essay. Now that you have understood the causes, maybe in the future you can something, something, something. Or hopefully this has helped you better understand blah, blah, blah. The key point about the conclusion is that you are sending your reader out the door. When you send a guest away after a party, hopefully they feel like it was a good party, or maybe you want to give them a small gift as they leave your house. And this is what the conclusion does. It tells the reader, hey, the party's over and I hope you have a safe journey. Here's a small gift. Now you can also consider writing an essay about the effects of a phenomenon or event. So the structure is similar. First, introduce your topic, describe what it is, and uh, make the reader feel like it is important to understand, or at least make it interesting. Then spend one paragraph on each effect. So like uh, one thing this caused was blah, blah, blah. Another thing that happened because of this was blah, 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 right? One per paragraph. And then again, by the end, now that you understand the effects, hopefully blah, blah, blah. Somehow the reader is better off from reading your essay. And in the conclusion, you should explain how or why. Now, you only have to do an essay on causes or an essay on effects. But if you want to, you can do both. Now, how do you do both? You might think, well, of course I start with the cause and then I go into the effect. That makes more sense, right? At first, it does seem like it makes more sense because causes always come before effects. But when we're reading an essay in English, we expect the more important ideas to come later. At the beginning, we get the topic and then slowly the ideas become more and more important. So in fact, you have to determine which is your focus. Do you want to focus more on the causes or more on the, event, uh, the effects? And put the more important one second. 
and talk about the less important one first. So if you think that the effect is more important, then yes, you will start with the causes. But very quickly you will move on to the effects and the part about the effects will be longer than the part about the causes. And the other way around, if you think the causes are more important, you will start with the effects and then very quickly move into a longer section about the causes. The key point here is how do you transition from one to the other? How do you move from cause to effect or from effect to cause? Now, from cause to effect is pretty simple. Because of this, therefore this happened, and then you go into the effects. But if you start from the effects, how do you then move into the cause? This is going against time, right? The effects happen second, but you have to transition backwards in time. Uh, some ways you can do this include saying like, um, so after you have described the effects, you might say, what caused such a terrible or wonderful situation? Or like, what are some of the major reasons behind uh, or such an important event, of course, had many different causes. You have to find a way to move from effect into cause. OK, questions? OK, so I want to remind you about how I am grading your essays, what I look for when I give you a grade. This is all on Moodle, right? Uh, grading rubric, Ping Fen Belgian. So as I mentioned in the second week, because this course is integrated with AI, I expect for most of the regular writing errors to be caught by the computer. So we're spending more time on the content of your essay. Three dimensions, logos, reason, uh, the order of your content, does it make sense, is anything missing? Pathos, emotion, is your reader able to feel something when they read your essay? And ethos, trust or character, does your reader trust you does your reader want to read your essay? So if you look at these standards, um, for example, the best um, performance on the dimension of logos is to have solid reasoning supported by illustrative examples and a persuasive presentation order. So the ideas have to make sense. You should give clear and interesting examples that fit your ideas. And the order that you present these ideas should also make sense. So just as we were discussing, how do you arrange cause and effect? This would be presentation order. A slightly lower grade would reflect, for example, good reasoning, not perfect, but good. And you have examples and you have thought about the presentation order. Slightly worse would be acceptable reasoning. Some examples, you should use more, but you do have some. And that I can tell that you know what presentation order is, but maybe you have not thought about it very much. An even lower grade, this is not a passing grade, right? This is 40%. You make claims, you state ideas but you don't explain them very well. Minimal development, not a lot of explanation. And minimal support, so not a lot of evidence or examples. And then finally, the lowest score would be you just say things and that's it. Right? Nothing except for just saying uh, common and unsubstantiated ideas. If we look at the second dimension, pathos, the best essay will powerfully evoke universal human experiences and emotions. So basically, a Taylor Swift song, 
right? If you can make your reader feel something like Taylor makes us when, feel when we listen to her music, that is an automatic five. A slightly worse performance would evoke common human experiences and emotions. What is the difference between universal and common? Universal means everybody has had that feeling or can understand that experience. Common means that maybe some people don't really get it, but they have heard of the idea. So the reader understands what you're saying, but maybe they don't feel it. A slightly worse performance uh, would be that you often attempt to evoke these human experiences and emotions. Maybe you don't succeed. All, maybe you don't succeed all the time, but I can tell that you're that you're trying. Slightly worse is I can tell that you know what you're supposed to be doing, even though you don't really succeed. And then finally, the worst one is you don't care about how the reader feels. Pathos is very important when we're writing essays with the help of AI, because AI will give you zero pathos. AI doesn't care how you feel. So this grade is based entirely on your writing. And then finally, the third dimension ethos. The best essay will inspire the reader's trust in the writer, and it will even make the reader admire you. They will think, wow, that's a really great essay, or wow, I never knew that. Thank you for telling me. Slightly worse would be inspiring the reader's trust, so they completely believe you. They may not feel like, wow, but they, but they're with you all the way. Slightly worse than that is that you do try to write for a specific kind of reader. So you have an idea of who you're writing for, even if it's not 100% believable, but at least you know what you're supposed to be doing and you try to do it. Slightly worse is that I can tell you know what you're supposed to be doing, even though you don't succeed. But I know that you, you know that this is part of writing an essay. And then finally, the worst example or the worst performance is you don't care about the reader. E uh, ethos will also include um, any remaining grammar and spelling mistakes because this is about inspiring the reader's trust. If you make easy mistakes, the reader will trust you less. So it looks like I'm not grading you based on the number of mistakes. But in fact, that is still included in the ethos dimension. So if you hand in an essay that is 100% written by AI, you will probably get a, a two or a three on logos because AI cannot give really good examples. You will get a one or maybe two on pathos and you will get a one or maybe two on ethos. That's a very low score. And so this is why we are spending so much time every week talking about your essays. And this is why you have two or three weeks to write each final draft. Because now that you don't have to worry too much about grammar and spelling, you should use that extra time and effort to think about these three dimensions. Do your ideas make sense? Are they presented in a logical order? Can you make your reader feel emotions related to your topic? And can you make sure that your reader trusts you and wants to read your essay instead of maybe somebody else's essay or going online to look for information? Why should the reader want to read your essay? This last point, ethos, is especially hard when writing an exposition essay because exposition is about giving information. But if you only think about information, you'll end up writing an essay that sounds like Wikipedia. And nobody likes to read Wikipedia. We're not reading Wikipedia because it's fun. We read it to get information. 
So how can you write in a way that makes that information interesting? And also it feels like only you could present that information in this particular way. So I mentioned some hints about how to improve your ethos during the individual conferences. And what I said was there are usually two ways to think about how to make your essay feel like it's your essay and yours alone. Only you could write it. The first way is to have an interesting style. Write in a way that your reader wants to keep reading. They enjoy the experience of reading your essay. So you can think about how to be funny, how to be uh, passionate, how to be um, exploratory. Like maybe your essay is you're studying some issue along with your reader. Both of you are exploring this issue together. The other main way to improve your ethos is to provide content that only you can provide. So something based off of your personal experience, something based on your own thoughts and your own feelings. Or in uh, some cases, you can talk about something from the perspective of Taiwan. We're writing in English. Most people who write in English don't have a lot of information about Taiwan. So if you can provide a Taiwanese perspective, this would also count as inspiring trust and interest from your reader. Um, as for pathos, the fastest way to evoke emotions is to give vivid examples. If you say, I felt sad, your reader doesn't feel sad. But if you describe the situation that made you feel sad, the reader may also feel sad, even if not as sad as you felt, but at least they will feel some kind of sadness. So description and examples are the best way to evoke emotions. As for logos, reasoning, um, well, if there's a problem with your presentation order or with the completeness of your information, I will discuss it with you during the individual conference. Logos is kind of harder to explain because uh, people often think that good logic and good reasoning is part of the human mind. So if you make a mistake here, like you present an idea out of order or what you're saying doesn't make sense. There really is uh, no fast way to fix that. We have to examine that on a case by case basis. So we'll discuss any of uh, the problems with logos in individual conference. This grading rubric is based on Aristotle's rhetoric. And he also has some problems explaining logos. So like in his rhetoric, there's a section on pathos, there's a section on ethos, and then he calls logos what every speech must have. And then he gives specific, he gives like 20 specific examples of good reasoning or bad reasoning. So even Aristotle does not have like a golden rule for logos. So we're going to do that on an individual basis. Questions? So if you were wondering why your midterm score looks like that, this is why. Uh, your midterm score is based on your narrative essay. OK, so for the rest of today, uh, I will let you decide how to spend this time. You have two things that you can do. You can finish the final draft of your exposition essay. And you can uh, begin thinking about and write planning and writing your cause and effect essay.
And next week, we will have individual meetings about your cause effect essay. I know like last time for the exposition essay, most of you came to see me empty handed. You had ideas, but you didn't have anything written down. You can do that if you want, but I think that's a pity, because if you write something down, then we also get a sense of how you will develop the details of your essay. Ideas are great. Everybody has great ideas. Most of the time, the problem comes when you turn those ideas into words on paper. So if you can bring me words on paper, then we have something more specific to discuss. Um, but in the end, it's it's your choice. So you can finish your exhibition essay, you can begin uh, your cause effect essay, and there's one more thing I want you to do. Please log on to Moodle and fill out this midterm survey. This is connected to the course reconstruction project. Please go on to Moodle and fill out uh, the midterm survey. This is anonymous, and you, we have a Chinese version and an English version. Both of them are the same content. So choose one and please fill it out.